In this video, we'll see how B cells get activated in important different ways. The first two are normal responses to T-independent and T-dependent antigens. The third describes the trick that's used to allow a class-switched antibody response to a carbohydrate vaccine. The fourth is the mechanism whereby anti-self, that is, autoimmune B cells, can be activated if the self-antigen gets coupled to a foreign protein. A typical large carbohydrate is made up of repeating sequences of a few simple sugars, so it can have multiple copies of identical antigenic determinants. When it binds to an anti-carbohydrate naive B cell, many determinants bind the surface IgM and IgD receptors. The backbone of the carbohydrate forces strong clustering of the immunoglobulins. This provides a signal that is strong enough for B cell activation. The B cell then upregulates production and release of the first immunoglobulin that B cells make, IgM. Because there is no T cell help involved that would allow class switching, the B cell remains at the IgM stage. Unlike carbohydrates, proteins typically have multiple different antigenic determinants. This one has three shown. The B cell has many antigen receptors, and in this case, each one binds the same epitope on a different antigen molecule. There is no strong clustering as there was with carbohydrates. The cell endocytoses the entire antigen molecule. After fusion with lysosomes, the antigen is processed by enzymes to peptides. Individual peptides are loaded onto MHC class II molecules, which then move to the cell surface. A follicular helper T cell that recognizes a peptide shown on class II MHC eventually arrives and binds. CD4 strengthens the binding. An activation signal begins. CD40 ligand on the T cell engages CD40 on the B cell, providing an accessory signal that instructs the B cell to switch from making IgM to a downstream class. The activated cell first secretes IgM. Once it completes the necessary gene arrangements for class switching, it goes on to secrete IgG. As we saw, antibody responses to carbohydrate vaccines like pneumococcal or meningococcal capsular antigens are restricted to IgM, which, though it is excellent at activating complement, penetrates poorly into tissues and is not itself opsonizing. If the B cells could switch to IgG, the vaccine should be much more effective. Here's how that's arranged. We see a conjugate vaccine in which the capsular polysaccharide is chemically coupled to a highly immunogenic protein, which is commonly diphtheria toxoid. This B cell is specific for the carbohydrate antigen. It takes up the bound antigen along with the coupled protein. After lysosomal fusion, the protein is processed to peptides, some of which are loaded onto MHC class II molecules and moved to the surface. We show the antigen here to remind us that the B cell is specific for the carbohydrate. A follicular helper T cell comes along, which is specific for the processed and presented diphtheria peptide. It sends switch signals through CD40. The activated B cell first secretes IgM anticarbohydrate, and because of the T cell help, then switches to secreting IgG. By coupling a protein to the carbohydrate, we make the B cell able to do something it could not have done on its own. We start with the premise that anti-self B cells can exist, because without T cell help, they would make at best low affinity anti-self IgM, and anti-self follicular helper T cells are rare because of the effective thymus negative selection. We also suggest that sometimes self proteins may attach to foreign proteins in a stable way. An example is our intestinal enzyme tissue transglutaminase 2, which acts on grain-derived gluten proteins and sometimes gets stuck to them. If this happens, the complex may bind to a self-reactive B cell, which is specific for some epitope on the self-protein. The complex is endocytosed. 
processed to peptides, and an epitope of the foreign protein is presented on the surface of class II MHC. Along comes the appropriate follicular helper cell, which sends in activation and switch signals. A reminder, the T cell is anti-foreign peptide, but the B cell is anti-self. It becomes activated and secretes IgM anti-self, and then switches, releasing IgG against the self-protein. This is thought to be the mechanism of the autoimmune aspect of celiac disease. 